A PGP route server is basically an EPGP route reflector. There is no such terminology in PGP, but it performs the same route reflection function as an IPGP route reflector. So, BGP route server provides an alternative option to full EPGP mesh pairing between autonomous systems. Just like IPGP route reflector, it doesn't need to be in the data path to perform the route reflection. In data centers, BGP route server is commonly used in VXLAN EVPN multi site deployments. However, in service provider networks, it is used to connect several internet exchange operators. I will show you an example in each case. The route server provides AS path, mid and next hub transparency so that peering border routers or ISPs at the internet exchange still appear to be directly connected. So no change in the AS path, mid or next hub when the route server reflects the route to other peers. I will show you that in the lab. A BGB route server provides the following benefits. Reduce configuration complexity on each border router. Reduce CPU and memory requirements on each border router, because here we have less peers. Reduce operational overhead incurred by individualized peering agreements. This is especially for ISPs because each time two ISPs need to have BGB peering, they have to set agreements between them, including details like the location, cooling infrastructure, cabling infrastructure, bandwidth, etc. So there is an overhead of such agreements and route servers reduces peers between ISPs, which reduces operation overhead. Allow the environment to scale well for control plane peering and reduces the management burden of configuration and operation. So here again, less EPGP peerings will have less control plane overhead. Let's have an example. Here we have ISPs EPGP full mesh design. Six ISPs connected to each other full mesh. Each ISP connected to the other one. So here we need to have an by n minus 1 over 2, here we have 6, multiplies by 6 minus 1 over 2 equals 15. 5 neighborship per ISP, right? Of course, if we increase the number of ISPs, the peering number will be increased as well. Using route server design, it will be like this. And this one, I will configure it in the lab. Here we have a route server in the middle. Each ISP router connected to that internet exchange or route server. Let's say we have ISP B advertised a subnet 192.168.10.0.24. Advertise that subnet to the IX or the route server. Then the route server will send it to all other peers if there is no policy prevents that and each of these isp switches will see that 192.168.10.0.24 next up is this ip address here which belongs to isp b autonomous system will be 200 and the mid will be the same set by switch b so this one here autonomous system 999 will not present in the as path any IP address related to the route server will not be set as a next hub. It will be transparent. Let's see the data center usage. Full mesh design in multi-site data center. EVBN multi-site architecture requires the border gateways. These are border gateways from a local site to peer with other border gateways at remote sites like site one here we have two border gateways for redundancy and each of them should peer to other border gateways in other sites this full mesh requirement is not mandatory for a proper exchange of information but given the various failure scenarios that are possible a full mesh is the recommended configuration when you deploy two sites with two border gateways, the number of BGB peerings remain manageable. 
However, when you scale out the eVPN multi-site environment and add more sites and border gateways to each site, the number of full mesh BGP peerings become difficult to manage and creates a load on the control plane. So instead of having full mesh like this, we can use route server design in multi-site data center. Here we have route servers. As I mentioned, if a deployment consists of many sites and many border gateways, the need of full mesh eVGB peerings may create additional complexity. Using a route server will simplify the design and reduce the burden of having so many BGB peerings. Such a route server can be placed in the layer 3 cloud or in a separate location reachable from every border gateway like this one here. The route server will act as a star point for all the control plane peerings for all the border gateways and will help ensure reflection of BGB updates. And of course, for resiliency, a pair of route server is recommended like what we have in this example. Here in our lab, I will show you a demonstration how to configure a route server in a CSR 1000V. In Nexus OS, we can't configure route server for IP version 4 unicast. Let's go to the lab. Here we have ISP A, B, C, D, E, and F. Also, we have the Internet Exchange, which is the CSR 1000V. So we have a typical normal BGB configuration. Show IP BGB summary. As you can see here, we have a successful BGB neighbors. Switch B is advertising two prefixes, show run BGB. Network 192.168.10.0.24 and 20.0.24. Show IP BGB. Next up, zeros. It's locally injected. And as expected, all other peers will have the BGB update with autonomous system 999, let's say switch F now. Expect to see 999, then 200, right? Because here we have 192.168.10.0.24 and 20.0.24, okay? The next hub will be 10.10.10.18. And the IS path will be 999-200, which is not what we are looking for. But this is the status without route server. So let's check switch F to IP BGB. Yes, the next hub is 10.10.10.18. And the AS path includes the 999. Now we need to do two things. In order to configure route server, we need to configure the CSR 1000V with a command route server client. Also, we need to configure all other ISP routers to disable the enforce first autonomous system. Because by default, any of these routers expect to have the neighboring router, in this case ISR or the IX autonomous system number at the beginning of the AS path right? Because this one is advertising the prefix and we expect to see its AS path in the AS sequence, right? To do that, we need to disable the enforce AS path first. And I did that for all of the ISP routers. So here in switch ISP A to run BGP, you can see no enforce first AS. This is the case in all of them no enforce first AS. And this is a PGP global command. With this command, the switch will not check the AS path if the neighboring router who advertised the route have its own autonomous system number in the AS path at the beginning of the AS path. Okay. And then in the route server, we need to configure each of the neighbors with the route server client. So neighbor 10.10.10.1. One second. Neighbor 10.10.10.1. Route 
server clients okay and the second one is five third one is nine thirteen seventeen and last thing twenty one okay now if you check switch f bgb table show ip bgb we will see that a autonomous system is 200 and the neighbor is 10 10 10 dot 1 not 10 10 10 dot 18 okay so this one should be changed now let me do soft clear ip bgb star soft IP BGB. Now we have the new result. Previously it was 999 200. Now it is 200. And previously the next hub was 10.10.10.18. And now is 10.10.10.1, which is the autonomous system and next hub of the source of the subnet, ISP B. So this is 200 and 10.10.10.1 is the IP address of the ISP B switch. So with this, we can see that next hub and autonomous system path are preserved. All right, that's all I have for this lecture. I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching.